Hey students, now let's study about the hypovolemic shock. Hypovolemia produces reduced venous return, which in turn causes reduced cardiac output and decreased tissue perfusion. The reduced tissue perfusion to vital organs can cause irreversible damage to them, leading to immediate death. <coughs> Hence, to preserve perfusion of vital organs, the body responds by protective reflexes. These reflexes are effective up to a loss of 20 percent of blood volume. And this response is called compensated stays. If the loss of blood exceeds, these responses cannot maintain the perfusion of vital organs also and this is called the decompensated states. So, up to 750 to 1000 ml of blood loss, the body will be able to maintain the perfusion of vital organs without death of the person. This is compensated shock. But if the loss continue to be there, if it exceeds 20 percent, then these predatory responses also cannot sustain the perfusion of vital organs and this leads to a stage called decompensated stage. How this compensated shock occurs? Hypovolemia we have seen that there is reduced cardiac output due to decreased venous return. In addition, the factors causing hypovolemia, either disease or trauma, causes metabolic stress also. Metabolic stress leads to the hypothalamic stimulation. So, these two factors in turn cause a cycle of events leading to the compensated shock. The reduced cardiac output causes stimulation of baroreceptors in the carotid sinus and aortic body. These baroreceptors, as the name suggests, they are the sensory receptors for the pressure changes in the blood. So, whenever there is fall of blood pressure, these stimulators are stimulated. When they are stimulated, they stimulate the vasomotor centers leading to sym sympathetic and adrenal medulla stimulation. This leads to increased secretion of adrenaline and noradrenaline. This will cause the inotropic and chronotropic effect on the heart plus peripheral vasoconstriction. Inotropic means Inotrope means increasing the force of contraction. Chronotrope means increasing the rate of contraction of heart. This leads to the increased cardiac outputs. The decreased cardiac output causes decreased renal perfusion. Decreased renal perfusion causes activation of renin angiotensin system. This leads to peripheral vasoconstriction. The peripheral vasoconstriction leads to increased cardiac outputs. So, this is the mechanism of production of increased cardiac output. The vasoconstriction is seen in this planknic and peripheral vessels. In the peripheral vessels, the effect starts in the lower limbs and ascends to the face. That means, if a person comes to you with small amount of blood loss, first you will find the changes of vasoconstriction in the feet. If the blood volume decreases still further, then the vasoconstriction will be seen in the upper limbs also still later even in the face. 
coronary, cerebral and pulmonary vessels are unaffected with this vasoconstriction. So, this leads to redistribution of blood to the vital organs. When sympathetic system is stimulated, it is so it is total sympathetic stimulation. Then why some vessels are constricted and some vessels are not affected, some vessels are dilated? Why? Yes. So, when sympathetic is stimulated and vitamin is injected into the body, then there should be total vasoconstriction. Why cerebral vessels, coronary vessels, pulmonary vessels are not affected? Auto regulatory mechanism is there only for the brain. What is S? What is auto regulatory mechanism? S or increases? Perfusion is constant. Yes, that is for the brain. For the other organs, it is not there. For the heart, it is not there. Then why the coronary vessels are not constricted? It is because of the receptors. The sympathetic acts on the receptors. In turn, the receptor receptors will affect the action of sympathetics. There are two types of receptors for the sympathetic system. They are alpha and beta. These receptors are not uniformly distributed throughout the blood vessels. So, depending upon their distribution and depending upon their stimulation, the effects will be seen. The stress of disease or trauma will produce stimulation of hypothalamus. The hypothalamus stimulation will lead to stimulation of anterior and posterior pituitaries. Stimulation of anterior pituitary lead to secretion of ACTH. This in turn will stimulate adrenal cortex. This will produce secretion of cortisol and the mineralocorticoids. The cortisol and mineralocorticoids, they retain sodium. When sodium is retained, water is retained along with sodium. This will raise extracellular fluid volume. Rise of extracellular fluid volume raises intravascular plasma volume. The cortisol has initial property of sensitization of sympathetic system to catecholamines. The sympathetic nerve endings they become more sensitive for circulating catecholamines in presence of cortisol. The hypothalamic stimulation also stimulates posterior pituitary. This in turn will cause release of ADH. This acts on the renal tubules, causes absorption of more water. This will add to the plasma volume. So, the result is when the blood volume decreases, there is augmentation of cardiac contractility with increase in the pulse rate plus there is peripheral vasoconstriction with redistribution of blood to the central vital organs. This stage is called compensated sh shock. So, in this the person survives. Because of peripheral vasoconstriction, the perfusion of the peripheries and gut suffer. This leads to certain sequelae, especially the shock is prolonged. The most important thing is the acidosis. The peripheral tissues undergo hyperperfusion, leading to the anaerobic metabolism of the tissues. The anaerobic metabolism leads pyruvate production, 
this in turn converted to lactic acid resulting in lactic acidosis. The second sequela is respiratory stimulation. The respiratory centers are stimulated by hypoperfusion and also by metabolic acidosis causing deep rapid respirations. The third sequela is oliguria. Decreased renal perfusion because of renal vasoconstriction leads to decreased glomerular filtration. De causes decreased urine outputs. Normal urine output is 1 ml per kg body weight per hour. So, whenever you are asked to tell the urine output in a shock patient, you must always tell the ml per hour, not 2 liters in a day like that you should not tell. You must always say that 1 ml per hour per kg body weight. That means, for a 70 kg individuals, it is 70 ml of urine should be there each hour. So, you must have seen in ICUs the urine drainage tubes. So, in, in the wards generally you find the catheter is connected to a tube, the tube directly comes and ends in a bag where urine is collected. But in ICU, the urine bags are not like that the catheter connected is to a tube, the tube is connected to a, a plastic chamber of 100 ml capacity and the chamber is again connected to a bag. So, first the urine will collect in this 100 ml plastic bottle. So, from there you tilt it, the urine is poured into the main bag. This 100 ml bag, 100 ml container is having graduations. So, First, the urine will collect there. Every hour, the nurse will come and look at this container of 100 ml. So, 50 ml, 60 ml, 30 ml is there, she will note it and she will invert that. So, all this will be emptied into a bag there. So, this is to measure the hourly urine output. So, hourly urine output is a best monitoring device for assessing the progress of shock. And you must call this as oliguria if the u naught put is less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour. Decreased renal perfusion also produces activation of renal angiotensin system. This causes further vasoconstriction and increased aldosterone secretion. This leads to sodium retention and water reabsorption. This vasoconstriction aggravates renal perf perfusion sodium retention decreases the urine output. If the vasoconstriction still continues, what will happen for the kidneys? Decreased perfusion later leads to what? Yes? Pardon? If the perfusion still decreases, what will happen? there will be ischemia of the kidneys and there will be necrosis. What are the structures which are necrosis first? Tubules. They are the farther end of the supply of the vasa recta. So, the renal tubules, they are necros that leads to anoxic tubular necrosis. Again that leads to oliguria and anuria. So, in a patient with shock, if the urine output decreases, it can be due to Number one, decreased blood volume. Number two, due to decrease renal perfusion producing reno vasoconstriction. Number three, due to renal tubular necrosis. In this, renal tubular necrosis is more dangerous. That can cause increased morbidity and sometimes even mortality of the patients. 